Welcome back to So Grow and Cook on a chilly but beautiful end of February day. Let's take a look at what's growing in the polytunnel. So it's been a while since we had a little tour of what's growing inside the top polytunnel. I grew some winter and oriental greens in here about the middle of September thinking I was going to have this wonderful luscious crop throughout winter, which on the whole I think we have done. But when we had a really cold spell back in oh mid-December, just before Christmas, a few of the um, oriental greens died off and other things took a hit in here despite being under cover. So polytunnels are great for keeping wind and rain off things, but they're not brilliant at keeping extreme cold out, especially at night. They do need some light in order to give um, some warmth from the sunshine, obviously. So starting at the end here, I have planted a whole load of um, rocket seed or arugula. Um, my daughter gave me a couple of packets of seeds and I thought well I'm just gonna put these in and see what happens and this was I think October time and they all came up but other things have come up as well which I think were already in the compost. Um, some self-seeded parsley. I, I know this is a recurrent theme whenever I come in here we tend to see a lot of self-seeded greens, which to be honest, I'm really pleased about because it just gives me something to use that I didn't have to plant. Now, the wintered over lettuce is kind of so-so. It's Some of it survived and I have been picking things from it some of it has died back. We've had quite a lot of frost this year, much more than in previous years. Normally in winter around here we get a lot of wind and rain storms. We've had fewer of those. In fact we've not really had any named storms hit this part of Wales, um, but we have had an awful lot of really cold weather. More frost than usual. Now, these are gorgeous. These are some oriental greens that I planted that I got from our local seed library. Somebody had saved those and they're doing really well. Having taken a bit of a knock during that frost, they've perked up again. In fact, they're looking really beautiful and they're quite tasty as well. Further along, we have what's left of some red mustard. I had a whole patch of it which kind of got knocked back from the frost but I've planted some more seed and it's coming up so hopefully we'll have something else coming in its place and of course the obligatory purslane or claytonia very very winter hardy. In fact it self seeds like crazy and it's tasty it's a really mild tasting green um but it's good it's sort of i don't know it kind of tastes like baby spinach or oh i don't know if you've tried lamb's lettuce it's a very very mild tasting green really nice in salads I'm really going to plant these each year, although I may not have to because it seems to be coming up everywhere regardless. Look at these little tiny white flowers. Apparently it does throw a lot of seed out, as does my parsley, which I definitely did not plant here. But, you know, I'm letting it grow because it's a useful crop. And there's some more of the Claytonia, which I haven't planted there. And more rocket or arugula and flat leaf parsley again. We are eating a lot of small green salads. 
when I say small green salads, large in quantity, but the greens themselves are quite small and delicate and extremely tasty because you've got this um, peppery taste of the arugula or the rocket um, combined with the very sweet, mild Claytonia. And the, look at this stuff, it's mad, look at it. Everywhere. I definitely didn't plant it there and it's coming up. And then we've got the spinach, which is turning out to be an absolute workhorse. Much better than the chard. I have never seen um, spinach grow so well in the middle of winter during those terrible frosts. These were the only things that had not wilted. Now, I can't grow them at all in the summer because they just bolt, they go to seed. They really like shorter days or cooler weather or something. But if I plant them at the end of summer or September time, as I did this year, um, or 2022, they just have thrived despite being taken over by the Claytonia, which I haven't planted and a bit of chickweed as well. All of this stuff's edible, by the way. And I'm making lots of omelettes, lots of curries, lots of salads, spinach, claytonia, rocket, arugula, flat leaf parsley, mustards. They're all extremely useful crops. And I'm going to be doing this each year in the autumn. Now to the right, I lost all my bulb fennel after the frosts. So I thought I'm not going to waste the space. What I'm going to do is I planted at the beginning of February, and I know this is a bit of an experiment here. I planted um, 20 Charlotte seed potatoes in this deep raised bed. It's got lots of lovely homemade compost and things in it. And um, I'm hoping to get eventually an early crop. I do normally plant them early in March before I would plant them outside because, you know, we still get quite cold out here. I'm keeping them covered with paper feed sacks. So if anything comes up, they'll have a little bit of protection from any frosts. But once I do see the green coming up, they're safe in the ground before the green stuff comes up. But once the green bits come up, I will protect it with plastic. I'll probably put a hoop clush over it um, and see how early I can get some potatoes. Now, this bed is empty currently. And this one has got some asparagus, which is still asleep and I planted some Egyptian walking onions here and they're coming up but so is a lot of self-seeded Claytonia and bronze arrow lettuce which I had growing here last summer and the remains of some celery which didn't do very well last summer and the frost killed it back, but I've got some new stuff coming up by the looks of it. And some oriental greens that are flowering. So that's what's happening in the top polytunnel for now. Outside, the garden's looking a bit sad. It always looks a bit sad this time of year and a bit unloved. But things are happening, things are growing, beds are getting repaired and prepared. And in the little flower border along the outside of the polytunnel, you can see we've got a lot of tulips coming up and daffodils and other flower bulbs and some garlic. little Stella and 
some more leeks which we've been gradually harvesting and they've done okay. Some of the um, outer leaves have been a bit soft but the vast majority of the leek inside is fine and we've been making lots of soups and stews and risottos and things. We still have a few parsnips to dig up and they keep really well. <coughs> Stella, enough! <coughs> and the rhubarb's coming up, very pretty. I've got my timpali early, which is a bit more advanced. This year I thought I would do some carrots in these outside containers and see if that makes a difference to the quality of the roots. So I've got that. And we've got this old bathtub full of compost. I'm going to top it up uh, and try some carrots in here as well. I've just harvested some Jerusalem artichokes, quite a few, and I've given some away to a local permaculture friend. And we've got this, um, what used to be part of a oil container, which has been cleaned, jet washed, and I grew some potatoes in it last year. And this year, I think I'm going to try and growing, uh, try growing some carrots. So I'll have to make sure the um, growing medium is not too full of manure. Otherwise, we'll get a lot of forked roots. Here's the elephant garlic, which is thriving. <laughs> There's about 75 bulb, little cloves rather, in here. So hopefully that'll be around 75 bulbs of elephant garlic. And we've got some onions, which look a little bit weedy if you ask me, but hopefully they'll pick up. and a newish strawberry bed. And some of the red Russian kale, which is, I thought was dead during those really cold days. Um, it seems to be growing back rather well. And the willow hedge is looking splendid, although it doesn't have any leaves on it yet. And before too long, we're going to continue with our dead hedge. We eventually want to encircle the veg garden in a dead hedge. It provides a really nice wind break um, and it keeps the chickens out. And it makes use of all the brash we get when we coppice some of our trees. That's Eric, our new Ericana cockerel. <coughs> yeah, you tell him. You tell him. You're telling off the other cockerel, aren't you? Okay, I've sown some red Welsh onions. They're a perennial bunching onion, which are quite useful. Um, we use quite a lot of onions and oniony type. Um, plants and cousins of onions in our cooking. We like a lot of fresh salads and we like to cook with them. So the more variety and the more diversity I feel, the better. Now oh, they've not come up yet because I've only just put them in a few days ago. Further along, I have got some little uh, brassica seedlings. Now these, I think, ah, the broccoli. And cabbage. 
I'm going to do some succession sewing of these sorts of things and I'm going to start off by um, putting maybe three or four of each in the polytunnel, the top polytunnel, just to get an early crop. I think if I were to put them out in March or even early April out here, the ground is still quite cold and the nights can be quite cold as well. The polytunnel would just offer them a little bit of extra protection. Um, and with the daytime temperatures, with the sun coming into the polytunnel, they'll, they'll, my experience is that they tend to grow away really quickly. So I'm going to try that um, this year and then free up the space later on for other things. The other thing is, if I put some of these early in the polytunnel, I'm hoping to avoid the cabbage white butterfly um, coming to lay their eggs. They don't usually come along till about July, August. Actually, more like August around here. So, so module sown red onions. I've also got onion sets growing out in the garden. And some cauliflower which is at the same stage as the broccoli and the cabbage um, and a couple of those are going to go in the polytunnel as well. Now back in the autumn I took a, a couple of cuttings of some perennial cabbage sorry perennial kale and I gave them to um, somebody who was who wanted to try and start some off on their own um, and I had one left over and it rooted and it's growing quite well and I'm really glad I did that because the ones I had outside took a real knock from the cold weather we had. Um, so they didn't survive as far as I'm aware therefore I'm going to plant another one. But they do root really easily although sometimes you do have to wait. Underneath this little propagator we have got some um, sweet peppers and aubergines enjoying the sunshine. These are the ones that I planted back in January to get a head start because they do take quite a long time to grow. The sweet peppers, California Wonder and the, um, sweet Marconi Red are doing really well down here. They look quite healthy and happy. But these, I will have to bring them in at night because it just gets too cold out here to leave them overnight, even with the lids on. And I'm not going to risk losing the plants. Indoors in my little heated propagator, I've planted some petunia and other flower seeds and some of my tomato seeds. I've just got a few here. Um, I put the rest in the airing cupboard, but in total I've got 27 varieties I'm trying this year. I don't think I'll be planting all of them in the lower polytunnel. I'll probably donate quite a few of them to our annual plant swap that we do through the local seed library. It's always fun to try new varieties at these places. And here's some of that salad that I picked from the polytunnel earlier today. Isn't it lovely and green? I'm just going to dress it with some olive oil and balsamic vinegar. So there you have it. There's a quick tour of the end of February and what's growing in the garden. Tell me in the comments section below what you've started if you've started anything or what your plans are going to be. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, what have you been harvesting and what are you doing to wrap up your season? And once again, thank you for watching So Grow and Cook. And if you liked what you watched, don't forget to like and subscribe and press the little bell icon. See you next time. Bye for now.